Hello guys, and welcome back! Aren't you a bit tired of seeing the Glock on every top-selling list? Sure, the Austrian firearm manufacturer has delivered some exceptional handguns over the years, but so have other brands. I have nothing against Glock, which you probably know if you have watched other videos on my channel. But this particular video is dedicated to some of the other firearm brands that have produced some outstanding guns. Compiling this list was not easy, considering the available variety on the market. The competition between the firearm manufacturers is fierce, which for the most part is actually quite good for the consumer. But with so much variety to offer, one gets pretty confused. And the same thing happened to me while I was sorting the weapons for this video. So many weapons have performed well on the market, making picking just a few of them difficult. However, after considering some objective features and the overall performance of the handguns, I was finally able to narrow down my choices. Not all of you might agree with my list, but like everyone else, I also have my personal preferences. So let's just get to it. Number five, Smith & Wesson MNP Shield. MNP Shield is arguably the most popular gun designed by Smith & Wesson to date. Even a decade after its release, the handgun is quite popular, evident by its sales on the market. As per Smith & Wesson's annual report on fiscal performance, more than 5 million copies of MMP Shield have been shipped as of April 30th, 2022. Back in 2012 when it was announced, the concealed carry design of MMP Shield became an instant hit, partly because of the looping threat of stricter gun controls and the Sandy Hook incident. However, the gun might have received the stimulus from speculation, but in the coming years, it ruled the market because of its sheer capability and performance. The gun is available in three calibers, 9mm, 40 SNW, and 45 ACP. I have tried all three of them, but to be honest, the standard model that chambers 9mm seems to be the only practical option. Plus, it holds one more round than the 40 SNW, which I prefer. The second generation of Smith & Wesson Shield M2.0 is also available, but I still recommend sticking to the original standard model. It is not the most customizable gun on the market, but firearm manufacturers offer a choice regarding external thumb safety. I prefer the one without it, mainly because of its ease of drawing and firing the pistol. However, as I said in the intro, it really is a matter of personal preferences. Some people like it better with thumb safety. As for the feel, well, it is at par with other decent concealed carry on the market. As for the feel, well, it is at par with other decent concealed carry on the market. People with large hands would definitely need a bit of practice to get familiar with the grip, but people with small and medium-sized hands would be at home with the extended eight-round magazines. Number four, Taurus G2C. I do not recommend saving money when it comes to purchasing a concealed carry weapon, but if someone cannot stretch the means, Taurus G2C is a lifesaver, quite literally. Compare the spec sheet of G2C against the premium pistols on the market, and then throw in the price tag of around $250 in the mix to see exactly what I'm talking about. Most people compare it with Sig Sawyer's P365 Nitron, but frankly, it does not make sense. I mean, you can probably get two G2Cs for the price of one P365 Nitron. If you compare it with the classic Ruger LCP 382, you will realize that the latter doesn't even come close to its 380 caliber. So, the G2C is essentially the uncrowned king of the budget market in concealed carry. It is not the most good looking gun on the market, but its bases are covered. It is a striker fired pistol, which technically offers a single double action trigger with re-strike capability. And it is on par with some of the premium CCW when it comes to accuracy and reliability. The popularity of G2C has created a lot of aftermarket support for itself. You can have the trigger of the G2C replaced, which is probably the worst part about the gun. Furthermore, red dot sights can also be mounted on the gun for target shooting. However, I am not sure if most people will opt for red dots considering their price tags. A number of customers of Taurus G2C are also available on the market. Although I have not tried any of them, from the looks of them, they look pretty decent. If you like a customer variant, be mindful of the price tag. It is the only thing that makes the gun as good as it gets. And if you have to spend bigger bucks anyway, it is better just to purchase a CCW from a mid-tier category. Number 3. Springfield XDS 
Springfield's XDS is what you would call a gun that was well ahead of its time. You do not have to know the details to understand why that is the case. Just look at it and consider the fact that it was released in 2013. Although it was not the first gun of its class, the Walther PPS beat it to market. But the design of XDS set the stage for handguns like Glock 43 and Smith & Wesson's Shield. It is a polymer frame, striker-fired action single-stack handgun that chambers 9mm. The XDS holds 7 rounds in a flush mount magazine, but the extended magazine option that takes 9 rounds is also available. As with most concealed carry, the extended magazine offers a better grip than the flush mount magazine. You will struggle to find room for your pinky finger with the latter. What I like the most about this handgun is its textured grip, which features an adequately aggressive texture. It offers better control without being abrasive. Furthermore, durability is not a problem because it features stainless steel slides and metallic magazines. The magazines have witness holes for each round, which lets you know the number of rounds in the magazine at all times. Springfield used red fiber optics for the front sights, which I really appreciate, but I'm afraid the same cannot be said about the traditional two white dots on the rear sight. Although it is never a deal breaker, I would have appreciated it if Springfield had complemented front sights with decent rear sights. Nonetheless, the gun remains good even after almost a decade of its release. Number 2. Smith & Wesson M&P 45 2.0 I know all 45 ACP fans were waiting for this one. So there you go, Smith & Wesson's M&P 45 2.0, a gun that I believe is one of the best 45 calibers on the market. There is a lot I could talk about M&P 45 2.0. But let's just stick to what is important. It features a tactical and audible reset and has a very light trigger pull, especially if you compare it with other 45 ACPs. If you have used MMP before, you immediately notice the change in grip angle. With this new variant, Smith & Wesson's have angled the grip at 18 degrees to bridge the gap between their product and the Glocks. People have mixed feelings about the new design, but I for one find it interesting. I think it creates a more optimized angle for a natural shooting position. Furthermore, the pistol comes with four grip inserts, making the grip adjustable for all hand sizes. The grip of M&P 45 2.0 is also textured, but it does not try to be too aggressive. You get decent control without compromising the comfort of your hand. The only caveat in this gun is its stock white dot sights, I don't have to say are unacceptable in this price range. Number 1. Taurus G3C G3C is the Taurus's newest offering to replace G2C, a popular handgun we discussed earlier. Now, if you have been paying attention, you would know that G3C has big shoes to fill. I mean, there was not much we could complain about with G2C, but the newer variant is even better. For starters, there is no external thumb safety, which as I mentioned, was not something I'm a fan of. Another change in the new model is the longer trigger distance, which makes it feel lighter. The sights on G3C are also improved, but you would not experience a noticeable difference in the performance. Both of them get the job done by blowing bells and whistles. However, the biggest difference between the two variants is the Glock cut on the G3C, which allows you to use more aftermarket options. To be honest, there's not much that G3C does differently than its predecessor, and it's not bad. Why fix something that ain't broken? Taurus has nailed that philosophy, which is probably why it has been a commercial success. There you have it, the best selling guns of 2022 without the mention of Glock. Let me know what you think of the list in the comment section. Stay connected with the channel to learn more about guns and everything else surrounding them. As always, I will see you at the next one. Happy Holidays!